group of vets might run out of gas, but the opposite was true with this group. They turned it up down the stretch and were one of the most productive teams in the league in terms of fourth quarter points. It'll be the heat off the tip. Chalmers with it. Wade outside. LeBron James on the wing. There's the dish to Chalmers. Pass to Haslam. Six to shoot. Wade. Some nice ball movement here by the Heat. And LeBron with the basket. The assist by Wade. LeBron's got the first three points tonight for the Heat. Looks like a big part of why the Spurs were so good last year in the fourth was because they had so many options when possessions, you know, Steve start getting critical and the game is tight. Well, no question. You've got Parker to create off the dribble. You can always throw it into the low post to Duncan. Uh, but on top of that, you've got a roster full of guys who understand how to play the game and, and know how to play each other. Just the experience that this group has gained together over the years, I think, allows them to execute under pressure. Now, Green, after LeBron's three-pointer that didn't go. Back to Parker. And there's a call on Bucks. That's his first foul. Ray Allen, he's checked in for Miami. First quarter, just over a minute played. Duncan kicks to Parker. That's good. I'll tell you what I love about him. His ability to finish even while absorbing contact. He is so strong. Even with defenders hanging all over him, he continues to finish at the basket. And perhaps the best thing about him, Steve, is the way he takes charge down the stretch of close games. The higher the stakes, the better he plays. Here's Wade following the score by Tony Park. Wade fires. And not going to go. He misses the first attempt on the night. Wade seems to be slowing down just a touch. And the, the, the difficulty as you get older, when you're not a great jump shooter, which Wade is not, is that the defenses will back off you. And that's the big challenge now for Dwayne Wade, adjusting to that newer style of defense that he's going to be looking at. So it's San Antonio now. After the made shot from Dwayne Wade, stolen by Chalmers. Now Bosch. He passes to Chalmers. Wade outside. Back to Chalmers. Pass to Wade. Just five to shoot. The Heat need to get a shot off. Here's Bosch. And lots of contact there. Missing the shot. He'll shoot two. And Steve, you go back to the strong output for Dwayne Wade last season for the fourth time. In his career, he averaged over 20 points and five rebounds and five assists a game. Clark, one of only four players in the league last season to hit that mark. And Kevin, he led all shooting guards and player efficiency rating for the fifth consecutive season. Some might argue, but the numbers speak truth. He's the best shooting guard in the game. And misses it off the right side of the rim. For Miami, they've gone two for four from the field so far today. Wash up on top. Right side, Bosch. That's good. You know, his ability is matched only by his energy, guys. I mean, he's usually in the middle of everything for his team. Spurs trail by three. You know, part of being a championship team is having the talent first and foremost, but then managing the minutes of that talent. The Heat, I thought, did a nice job monitoring the minutes of the big three throughout the season and playoffs last year. Blanketed by the D, he fights to the rim for the layup. Duncan's got his first points of the night. The Heat have gone three of five shooting the ball so far. Chalmers passed to Wade. He kicks it to Allen. He dishes it to Aslam. Back to Allen. Gives him the lead pass. And there's Dwayne Wade on the assist by Allen. Well, as you said, Clark, the big three in their prime, but really... You want them to just get their work in during the season, not exhaust themselves before they make it to the playoffs. I thought, Kevin, along those lines, I thought by the end of last season, Miami was exhausted. And once you try to, to win a third title in a row, 
the emotional fatigue and exhaustion really becomes a factor. So this is going to be interesting to watch all year. Wade, he's covered by Ginobili. Wade misses. Parker outside. And Kawhi Leonard with the slam. Boy, great job of attacking on the break. Yeah, it sure was. He made a beeline for the bucket as soon as they got the ball. Right away, straight to the rim. A good close contest so far as we finish the first quarter. Spurs out in front. Neither team able to build much of a lead up to this point as we start the second quarter. And let's get your take, guys, on the scoring breakdown for the Spurs. Well, I like the fact they've already been getting a lot of high-quality shots in the paint. And they're sharing the ball, too, which I love. They're piling up the assist. We're seeing great offensive movement. Talking about Chris Anderson, guys, the Birdman. We weren't sure if he was going to be able to fly last season, but he did latch on with a very good Miami Heat team who was in need of some help rebounding, which is his strength. He still can do that and block shots as well. And let's now go to the sideline. We'll catch up here with Doris Burke. Doris? Spurs coach Greg Popovich throughout his career has seemed to strike a good balance between getting along with his players but also being demanded. Pop said, quote, I'd say the guy I've been toughest on and he's come through it all is Tony Parker. He's listened to me and believed in what I told him even when he was angry with me. He trusted me and I'll always appreciate that. And Kevin, it's a partnership that's yielded a lot of success over the years. They've become a terrific team. Thanks, Doris. Here's Parker. And that's out of bounds. San Antonio will retain possession. Splitters checked in for San Antonio. Green comes in for Mono Ginobili. Parker, right side. Bellinelli dishes to Parker. And it's off the back rim, no good. And the Birdman, a fan favorite from his days in Denver, the tattoos, his kinetic style of play, certainly drawing attention. Well, he's an athletic presence inside at both ends of the floor. Defensively, he can slide his feet and block shots. And offensively, he's a guy who kind of hangs out on the weak side and finishes plays by catching and dunking. LeBron against Green. Shoots from 12. LeBron, good. LeBron's got seven points in the game. My, he is so adept at finishing in the low post. And here in the second with about a minute and a half gone by. Parker drives in. You know, you survey other point guards in the league and ask them who their toughest assignment is, and a lot of them will tell you it's Tony Parker. I mean, his ability to weave in and out at the speed he does just drives would-be defenders mad over the course of four quarters. Parker is always in attack mode. That's a familiar sight. He hardly ever wastes his chances at the line. Cashes in regularly. Battier kicks to Cole. It's back to Battier. Wade feeds to LeBron. LeBron right side. Rocket six. And again, LeBron missing. And Clark, you mentioned the penetration ability of Tony Parker. He really has become the focal point of the Spurs drive and, and kick offense. Steve, so fun to watch. Yeah, you talk about his speed and quickness, uh, but it's really all about the, the overall skill level, the ability to finish it in the lane, uh, the, the knockdown jump shooting. Uh, the free throw shooting also improved, but it's incredible how well-rounded Parker has become. Is he the fastest point guard, you think, in the NBA? I would say yes. Hmm. Miami trailer. And Cole kicks to LeBron. He's against Green. LeBron passes to Cole. Off target from three-point range. The Spurs have gotten off to a rough start here in the second quarter, going just one for five. Parker, right side. He feeds it to Splitter and is blocked by Cole. T Wade on the wing. Good ball movement here by Miami. Backing down is LeBron. Makes the lead pass. And it's good. Cole's got his first bucket of the night. What an amazing trick shot to confound the defender. Oh man, that's awesome. He's taking him to school right there. 
116 left in the second quarter. The Spurs have always been very mindful of resting key players during the regular season. Some of it has to do with age of their players. Some of it is regarding talent because they knew they were a playoff team most years. And you look at the research, there is something to be said for not playing guys when they're fatigued because injuries are more likely if you play tight. And a chance here to catch up with the fourth member of our crew, Doris Burke. Hi, Doris. Guys, as you know, the Miami Heat try to keep the plays they run as simple as they can and rely on their talent and teamwork to win them games. But playing like that can present its own kind of problems. Coach Bolstra said, quote, the challenge is not getting bored with simplicity. Simple is what works, though, as evidenced by their back-to-back -back titles, guys. Well, Dora, sometimes it makes sense to keep it simple. Thanks. And back to the Spurs and their strategy of resting their star players, not without some controversy. The NBA, as you may recall, fined the Spurs and Coach Popovich for sitting all their starting players for a nationally televised game back in November. Well, it was their fourth game in five nights, and Pop wanted to rest some of their guys because of just the, the nature of their schedule. But I think the, the problem was he didn't give the league advance warning. And that game against Miami, when he rested those three players, he actually sent them home. And I think that was a little shot at the league. And that's why there was a problem, and that's why the Spurs and Popovich ended up getting fined. And now, brought to you by Sprint. And we play two quarters out at American Airlines Arena. And a the Sprint Halftime Report, presented by Sprint. Welcome back as we take a look at this soaring view of the downtown Miami skyline. Look at LeBron James. He's really been playing well. Well, he created a lot of opportunities for himself in the first couple of quarters. And I'll tell you what, he, he was smart with his shot making, too. He really took good ones. You know, points per shot attempted is really one of the undervalued stats in the game. And it's a real measurement of efficient scoring. San Antonio leading by four. And Parker, here we go. And foul called as he misses. He'll go to the line and shoot two. It's on Chris Bosch. Tony Parker had a phenomenal 2011-2012 campaign, but as is the case with Greg Popovich, he challenged Parker to improve upon that for last season. Popovich told him, good players can be great for a little bit, but great players are always great. And that really resonated with Parker. This is to Aslam. Backed away, deflected. And now running it up the court. Green pushing it all the way. Parker kicks to Leonard. And it's good on the assist by Parker. Parker's got five assists tonight. You think about how great Parker has been. We forgot his career almost came to an end in the summer of 2012. This is a, uh, a very interesting part of his career. That's right. He was uh, an innocent bystander at a club in New York when a melee erupted. And Bottles were thrown. He's got a, a shard of glass that penetrated almost through his left eye. Very easily could have lost his vision and lost his career. Four of their last five makes came off of a high-quality shot inside. Yeah, that's textbook basketball. Just having their way down low. Right side, Bosch. Kicks it to LeBron. Pass to Wade. There's the feet to Aslam. LeBron outside. Six on the shot clock. Shoots from the line. Misses off the left eye. You know, Heat head coach Eric Spolster worked his way up from the very bottom in that organization. I mean, he got his start as a video coordinator and through years of hard work and dedication has really become an outstanding coach. Most of the time, that shot will go down. Boy, the defenders have to make sure they tag. Wade gets to Hazel. And the pass to LeBron. He's covered by Leonard. LeBron wishes to Haslam, and the shot is good. Haslam's got four this quarter. And back to coach Eric Spolster as a guy who got his start as a video coordinator, picking the game apart. Steve, he's very comfortable with the new advanced stat movement. Analytics in the yes. NBA. Yeah, and I got a chance to speak with him quite a bit. He says that the way they use advanced stats is just as a conversation piece in the coaching room. You know, their, their analytics department will bring them various information and it will force them to ask questions which is very healthy uh, for a coaching staff to do they kick it out to green back to parker 
here's Duncan, and that one is good with the extra effort on the glass. And the Spurs lead by six. You know, that pushback's about as easy as it's gonna get. You, you have to put a body on someone down there. Well, no box out, that's the result you get right there. The Spurs making a switch here. Diaz checked in. One thing I think that's helped extend Tim Duncan's peak effectiveness, you know, he was dealing with knee issues recently, but he committed to losing weight and slimmed down by over 25 pounds to take away some of that wear and tear on his joints. And, you know, over the last couple of seasons, it certainly seems to have revitalized him. The mid-range jumper becomes a pretty high percentage shot for him when he has that kind of space. Bosch gets to Allen. Back to Bosch. To the middle. Here's Parker. He's got 12. Addition out to Genova. Back to Parker. With the second effort. And that one's good. And it's a 10-point Spurs lead. Boy, he crashed the boards with purpose right there. Well-deserved second-chance points for him. Allen for the three. Tim Duncan with the rebound. The Spurs have gone five of nine on field goal attempts since halftime. One second separating the shot clock and game clock. Outside, Ginobili. And James pulls it down. Three on three. Rush kicks to Allen. Pass to Wade. Oh, trying for it. LeBron outside. And no good trying to get that one. Well, through three quarters of play, down double digits, it may... <laughs> and the final period of play just about to start. What do you guys think so far about the offensive approach for the Spurs? They've been the aggressors, and they've been tougher in the paint all game. Something we've also seen them doing tonight is getting the long ball to go down. Big points from outside. And two free throws coming up as he misses that one. Drawing the whistle and a lot of contact there. You know, every great player needs someone to push them to be better. LeBron said last year that, you know, that's what Kevin Durant does with him. And I think he works as hard as he does knowing that Durant is coming to try to take his spot as the best player in the league. And going back to LeBron for the time being, he's solidified Clark is standing. I, I think everyone would agree he's the best player in the NBA. Well, how about four league MVP trophies to his credit? One of only five players in league history to win that many. One of only a few players to be both MVP of the league and MVP of the finals in the same year. So, enough said. The defenders need to talk to each other. The communication lacking there on that three-pointer. And Chalmers kicks to Allen. Backing down is LeBron. Here's Bosch. It's blocked by Splitter. Spurs leading by 13. Ginobili outside. Leads him in there. Stolen by Chalmers. And out of bounds is San Antonio gains possession. A temporary lapse of focus from him on that turnover. It's embarrassing, but... On occasion, it does happen. The Spurs making a switch here. San Antonio's gone 4-6 from outside the arc tonight. Passes it to Duncan. Tipped away. Parker outside. He passes to Ginobili. Back to Parker. Shot clock at 6. Here's Splitter, and uh, oh, there's a whistle. He was going up for a layup, and while it looked like there was some contact, I wasn't sure they were going to call a foul shot or not, but sure enough, they have. So we've got a couple of free throws coming up. And Splitter drops them both. Well, if you're going to learn from someone, you might as well uh, take some lessons from Tim Duncan. That's what Tiago Splitter has done in San Antonio, really kind of growing up under the, the tutelage of one of the great players of all time. A moment to check in with Doris Burke. Doris? Thanks, guys. I got a chance to hear what Eric Spolstra was saying to his team. He told them, no holding back. I want 100% effort out there. If you can't give it, ask for a sub. No time to rest now. Let's get after it. 
Kevin, he wants everything they've got. And Spurs are taken 28 by the Spurs way back in the 2007 draft, but they had to wait three seasons, Clark, for him to come over from Spain. And as Greg Popovich was saying just this past season, he's finally showing what he can do because he's been healthy. Yeah, agreed, Kevin. And I think it was a wait worth making, yes. quite honestly. I mean, one of the premier backup centers in the NBA the last three seasons, and he earned himself a nice payday with his new contract, too. You know, when the shot's not there for you, you've just got to recognize it move the ball on. Yeah, I think he had tunnel vision right there. His only thought was to shoot it, no matter what else was going on. Spurs leading by 13. Out of bounds. Miami takes possession. Making a long pass like that is always a risky proposition. And we're around two minutes into the fourth quarter here. LeBron kicks to Chalmers. Back to LeBron. Launches it. Bosch defended by a splitter. It's stolen by Duncan. Knocked loose. And it's out of bounds to the Spurs as San Antonio retains possession. San Antonio calls timeout. They're up by 13. A minute 42 left in the fourth quarter. We're in the fourth quarter here, just under two and a half minutes gone. Duncan drawing the double team. Parker outside. Outside Leonard. Once again off the mark by San Antonio. From deep three-point range, and LeBron gets it to go with the assist by Chalmers. 15 points for LeBron. Parker kicks to Splitter. Leonard. Spurs passing it around. Inside. Splitter, that's good. Splitter's got four points in the quarter. And with that basket, you'd have to think this lead is safe. Well, if not 100% safe, certainly 95%. Chalmers working against Parker. Out to Wade. Back to Chalmers. He dishes it to LeBron. Fires for three. LeBron with another miss. Yeah, again, iffy shot selection there. Defender draped all over. Well, you got to understand who's guarding you in that situation. I mean, if he's on you tight, you can't just rise up and try to shoot over the top. Yeah, close, but I didn't think he got on balance quickly enough. And it's hard to draw charges as quick as players are at this level. That's not an easy bit of work there. So San Antonio goes with a fresh five on the floor. And Bellinelli kicks to Mills, feeds it to Diaw. Dishes to Mills. No good on the shot, a bit long that time. Miami has gone one of three from outside the arc since we've reached the fourth quarter. And they double him up with LeBron. Picked off in midair. And here's Mills. Now Bellinelli. And so it's San Antonio easily taking this one. And this one was such a lopsided victory. They never let up. They were full throttle from the start. And that about wraps it up for Clark Kellogg, Steve Kerr, and Doris Burke.